Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth. Got oh my goodness, table we're, here. It's, we're back from Christmas. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Everybody's still on vacation. <laughs> so, but we're here. But we're here. It's like and an old school matters. mailbag. Me and Ashley are going to be rocking it out today. So we're so glad you'll be part of us and uh, joining us today. Thank you guys. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas weekend. Wonderful time with friends and family and alcohol and movies. <laughs> I know I went to go see Star Wars a few times over the weekend. The movie theaters were so insane this weekend. I went to they see a movie packed. and it was what like, did you go see? I went to see Point Break. I fell asleep. <laughs> But, and was that theater actually full? In my defense, I was drinking. So yeah, the theater was extremely full. It was it was really crowded there. Like Point Break was full? Point Break was full. It was popping. The whole theater was super crowded. I guess everybody who went to go see Star Wars needed yeah, some place exactly. to go. Because there's a lot of Star Wars. Stuff. Anyway, guys, we still have a bunch of stuff that we need to talk about today. And the first thing is this. You don't see it in the sidebar because this kind of just dropped a little bit earlier today. But as many of you know, the brand new Marvel film, Doctor Strange, is in production right now and is on its way. And the first official image that we got, there it is right there, of Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange in the full outfit. This is what Entertainment Weekly, the cover, is going to look like. And I gotta say, my goodness, he looks great. Mm -hmm. He looks great as Doctor Strange. Now, do we have one of those other images as well? Some of those other images does. Here's another look at him from just a different angle. And, you know, I remember thinking that, um, oh, damn it. Who was it they had lined up to play Doctor Strange? Joaquin. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. I almost said River Phoenix. Uh, that would have been a feat. Um, Joaquin Phoenix was like, and I really wanted him to play it. That would have been great. But now that I'm seeing, I mean, Benedict is a fantastic actor, but... Looking at him, the way they've done him up, the style looks great. You had one more in there, didn't you? Here's a one with a little bit of effects put in. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, if you had shown, I'm just theorizing here, had you shown this picture to a 17-year-old John Schnepp, he probably would have crapped his <laughs> pants. He totally would have crapped his pants. These images look great. Now, look, it's just as it's just an image. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the the Fantastic Four, a lot of their images look great too. It could be an absolutely crappy movie, could be a spectacular movie. I don't know, but all we're doing is talking about the images, and the images look bloody wonderful. Now, in that same one, uh, that same article in Empire, they also ran some of the concept art, so you can look that up because it's not real photography from the movie. It's just concept art, some of which they showed us at D23 this year in Disney. That got us all very excited, including that concept art of him with his hands all smashed up. For those of you who know the classic story of Doctor Strange, you'll be a, that'll appeal to you. But I think these pictures look spectacular. Actually, you're just you're not I'm, you're not a historian on Doctor I'm Strange. I'm definitely not. But you're but seeing these pics of Ben to cover about. First you impression, honest to goodness, truth. He looks slightly molestery. First impression, <laughs> slightly molestery. But then when you when you showed that other image, Dennis, the last one you showed, that was intriguing. Oh, with the lightning in the with hands With the lightning and in the hand. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's just this one shot, but that lightning in the hand. Yeah, that one, exactly. I wonder that one if, looks intriguing. I wonder if Disney will pick up on that and start using in their official Twitters, Doctor Strange hashtag slightly, only slightly molestery. <laughs> Which can 50% less molestery than previous Love Doctor it. Strange. Love that. <laughs> molestery <laughs> Great light. Tagline. That's it. It's molestery light. All right, let's go on with our first official right. story of the day. It's Monday, which means it's time for our weekly box office report, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Coming in at number one is Star Wars The Force Awakens, making over $153.5 million in its second week of release. Coming in second spot is the new Will Ferrell Mark Wahlberg comedy Daddy's Home, making 38.8 eight million dollars and the number three spot is the new jennifer lawrence film joy taking in 17.5 million dollars and the number four position is the tina fey amy poehler comedy sisters making 13.8 million dollars dropping less than one percent from its opening weekend and rounding out the top five is alvin and the chipmunks making 12.7 million dollars and dropping just 11 percent from its opening weekend john what stands out to you about this week's box office report okay well let's put the big obvious thing to the side for a second incredibly impressed with the performance of Daddy's Home. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I really did not think it could get close to $40 million 
in the second week of Star Wars, and, and not to mention, forget Star Wars aside, I didn't really feel much of a buzz for that film at all, and the reviews have not been great, all that kind of stuff, but for it on Star Wars the second week, with the buzz that we thought, to get almost $40 million is impressive. Super impressive though, Sisters. Sisters, which opened head-to-head -head against Star Wars, dropped 0.3%. Crazy. This, that's insane. It dropped only 0.3%. So I guess a lot of the people who were interested in, in Sisters went out to see Star Wars last weekend, and then this weekend came back to the theaters to go see Sisters instead. And Alvin and the Chipmunks also only dropped like 11, 11.5%. Mm -hmm. Those are insane numbers. That is fantastic. Uh, going back to what you're talking about, Point Break. Point Break opened this weekend uh, and only came in eighth place, but still made $10 million. I'll be honest with you. I was expecting it to make like five. Mm -hmm. I was really expecting it to make five. So that's a big disappointment, though, has got to be Concussion, the Will Smith movie, which is a movie oh gosh, for yeah. like all year we'd been looking forward to. It opened this weekend, opened in sixth. Tell the truth, Tell man. Tell the truth. Tell the, the truth. The truth is it opened in sixth place man. with only $11 million. Now, granted, the movie only cost $35 million to make, but and probably you know 33 of that was Will Smith's paycheck. But, I mean, to open, <laughs> so I, I, I think a lot of people were expecting this movie to open to a lot more. And I think Joy, you know, it's... You know the ratings it was it's been getting the reviews it's been getting so opening of seventeen million has got to be a little bit of a disappointment. But let's talk about the big Avi thing here, Star Avi. Wars. All right, Star Wars second weekend makes a hundred and fifty three million dollars. Now it took a little bit more of a dip than we were expecting. I think I was predicting around a thirty percent drop, mm -hmm. or was hoping for about thirty percent. All came close to a forty percent drop. Thirty eight percent drop is what it ended up getting. But wrap your heads around this, okay? Everybody talked about what a huge smash hit Fast and the Furious 7 was, right? And for good reason. It is a huge, insane hit. Fast and the Furious 7, the big, massive hit on its opening weekend that everybody raved about, made $147 million on its opening weekend. Star Wars The Force Awakens just made more money in its second weekend than Fast and the Furious 7 did on its opening weekend. As a matter of fact, if you want to take Star Wars The Force Awakens second weekend numbers, it would come in 10th place in the all-time opening weekend record list. Only nine films in history made more money on their first weekends than Star Wars The Force Awakens made in the second weekend. Wow. That is insane. And also put this in mind. Uh, the previous record holder for the largest box office second weekend was Jurassic World, which made $106 million. Only two films in history have made $100 million plus in their second weekend. Jurassic World and I believe uh, Avengers. But Jurassic World was the record holder at 106 this almost beat it by $50 million. Again, I think living in this time that we are right now, I don't think we fully appreciate the gravity of these numbers that we're seeing, how crazy these numbers are. Now, another little record that Star Wars The Force Awakens broke this week was that it became the fastest movie in history to reach $1 billion. It took Jurassic World, worldwide that is, it took Jurassic World... 13 days to hit the billion dollar mark. It took Star Wars The Force Awakens 12 days. So it only beat Jurassic World by one day. But keep this in mind. Hadn't opened in China yet. And Jurassic World did open in China in its opening couple of weeks. Star Wars has not yet. So Star Wars, I mean, arguably Star Wars could have hit the $1 billion mark on day 10 as opposed to day 12. But still, it, it broke the new record, all that kind of stuff. Now... Star Wars is now approaching a new record. The all-time domestic box office record is held by Avatar, and Avatar made about $760 million just in North America. Star Wars, on the end of just its second weekend, has already crossed the $554 million, or $544 million mark at just the end of its second weekend. I think Avatar's numbers are, are days are numbered as far as the domestic box office record. I believe Star Wars is going to smash it and smash it hard. But 
where are we in terms of worldwide? All right. So Avatar still holds the worldwide box office record as well at two point, roughly $2.8 billion. Star Wars right now is just sitting just a hair under $1.1 billion. It's still $1.7 billion away. I still feel dubious about Star Wars The Force Awakens' chances of catching Avatar in the worldwide box office. We're going to get a much better indicator once it does open in China and see what kind of business it does in China because there are some people who don't think it's going to do all that great in China. Some people think it will. And that'll give us... I do think it's a lock for catching Titanic for number two all time. But... I mean, I don't know. That it's still one, despite this huge opening, it's still one point seven billion dollars mm -hmm. away. Um, that is a huge, tall order. But I mean, every other record is falling, and I think it has a chance. I think it has a chance. But if I had to put money on right now, I'd still guess that Star Wars: Force Awakens is not going to catch the worldwide total of Avatar, but it will smash the domestic record. So mm -hmm. those are things that stand out to me. Yeah. All right. What's next? As many of you know, director Christopher Nolan has a new film slated to come out on July 21st, 2017. However, in typical Nolan style, we're still pretty much in the dark about what that project may be. Until perhaps now. According to a report in The Playlist, rumors are now circulating that Nolan's next film will be a World War II true story based on Operation Dynamo, which was a near-miraculous evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force and other Allied troops from the French seaport of Dunkirk. Kirk, which took place from May to June in 1940. The eight-day evacuation ended up saving the lives of 300,226 soldiers with a hastily assembled fleet of over 800 boats. John, do you think the report is true? And if so, does this sound like a Nolan film you'd be interested in seeing? Well, the, the first question is, of course, the big question. Is this rumor true? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I guess the there's some outlet that is saying that that's going to be his next film. Either way, we're going to find out officially, considering the release date's in a year and a half, we're going to find out officially what Nolan's next film is very soon anyway. So this could be it. I mean, yeah. it, it could fit. So let's operate on the assumption for a second that this report is true and real. Okay, It may not be, but let's operate on the assumption that it is for a second. If it is, this is the right move for mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan. I mean, he's been locked into fantasy kind of you know, if you want to talk about inception and things like that a sci-fi element all this kind of wondrous stuff for him to come back down and do something like a world war ii film for to me when i think about it it feels like nolan could be setting up uh, what is it operation dynamo as his spielberg version of saving private ryan this could be nolan saving private ryan and i believe it's this kind of film that is lacking on Christopher Nolan's repertoire. You know, a lot of times we talk about the greatest directors of all time and, um, you know, which directors are we putting on that Mount Rushmore? And, and I talk a lot about how I believe Spielberg greatest of all time, partially because, well, mainly because he's just the best director ever lived, but partially because Spielberg over his career has shown he can do anything. Like from comedy, fantasy, action, war film, uh, trans like, uh, like almost anything, you name it, he's done it. For Christopher Nolan now to kind of switch gears a little bit and do something like a World War II epic, mm. that would tell me Christopher... Now, look, let's be honest. Christopher Nolan now has all the money in the world. He, <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't wondering where his bus fare is coming yeah. from. He has all the money in the world. Uh, he's lacking an Oscar on his mantle. But that aside, he's known as one of the great filmmakers of our age. If he takes on a big World War II epic, what are the things that tells me is that Nolan is starting now at this young age to think about legacy. He's starting to think about where is his place going to be 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when people talk about the greatest directors of all time. He's absolutely one of the greatest directors of our generation right now. Mm -hmm. But to me, and I think to a lot of people, he's not in that upper echelon, that, that Mount Rushmore of directors conversations yet, just because he's so young mm -hmm. in his career. He hasn't had time. He very, may very well get there. And I think if it turns out he's doing this World War II film, he's thinking legacy. He's thinking his place in history. And he might actually start be starting to think about that one empty space on his mantle that he's got waiting for his best director. Because you know he's going to get one or two or more at some point. And I just think this would be a brilliant move for him. And as, an, as a fan, just a movie fan, to see a gritty, 
based on true events, World War II film directed by Christopher Nolan. I mean, my God, that's awesome. That's awesome. It would instantly become one of the most anticipated films of 2017 if this is gay. Now, let's let's call a spade a spade. Um, you know, it, Christopher Nolan could put out a documentary in 2017 about his thought process and decision-making process on how he came about wiping his ass from front to back instead of back to front, and it's still going to be one of the most anticipated that films. That could cause infection. That, oh, really? Is that it called? Could, I did could not cause know that. cause infection. We need to talk you off learned. air. You learn something new every day. Um, but, I mean, that movie alone, because of Christopher Nolan, would be one of the most anticipated. But seriously, a World War II film by Christopher Nolan absolutely would be one of the most anticipated films of the year. Super this excited looks about like it. Christopher Nolan does Steve Jobs. <laughs> That's what this graphic looks like to me. He's got these rocking the turtle he's rocking right the now. Turtle he looks like he's about to show us the new <laughs> iPad. That'd be awesome. All right, what's next? Well, what a better Christmas present could we ask for than a brand new trailer from Deadpool? Based upon Marvel Comics' most unconventional anti-hero, Deadpool tells the origin story of former Special Forces operative turned mercenary Wade Wilson, who after being subjected to a rogue experiment that leaves him with accelerated healing powers, adopts the alter ego Deadpool. Armed with his new abilities and a dark, twisted sense of humor, Deadpool hunts down the man who nearly destroyed his life. Deadpool is set to hit theaters on February 12th. John, what'd you think of this new trailer? Okay. This was such a Christmas miracle, <laughs> this trailer. <laughs> this trailer was so good. And actually, I'm curious because you just watched it for the first time. Yeah. Your What is your reaction to the trailer? First, I mean, where do I start? Okay, seeing TJ Miller in there made oh, yes. me smile so much. I love him on Silicon Valley and his line, what was it? You look like the inside of someone's asshole. Yes. That was freaking amazing. Um, it seems hilarious, and it seems a lot better than I thought it would. My one worry, my one slight worry, is that are they going to use too many f bombs to to you know really drive home that we got that hard R? Do you think that it's going to be overused? Here's here's the thing. We have to see the movie to understand, to, to gain a sense of what would overused be. Because, yeah. I mean, it really all depends on the tone of the movie. Because if in the first 10 minutes you get the tone of the movie, that if he drops 30 F-bombs, the tone that might be really pushing it. Mm -hmm. But if in the first 10 minutes of the movie we get a different sense of what the tone of the movie is, then 70 F-bombs may feel completely um, acceptable. It right. might feel like completely it fits in. So we won't really know until we start watching the movie and get a get a sense. I for also it. loved his dirty sense of humor. So oh I, I ha like so it good. was just it was so great. It was hilarious. I, I almost spit out my hot chocolate when he goes. Now I never say this, but <laughs> don't swallow. I mean, I was like, no. it was outrageous. Look, so I've got a lot of people already writing to me. We're already over the weekend. We're writing to me, John. This is the greatest trailer of mm -hmm. the year. I'm not ready to say that. To me, still, but what a great trailer to end the year with. To me, the best trailer that we've got in 2015 is still that Comic-Con Batman versus Superman mm. trailer. That is still, to me, the best trailer of the year. Maybe one of the greatest trailers I have ever seen. I would also, I think I would squeeze Captain America Civil War in number two, because that okay. first trailer was just dying. A very mm -hmm. different trailer from that Batman v mm -hmm. Superman one. But I, I feel very comfortable saying what a thank you so much, Ray, for that picture. Uh, I feel <laughs> really, I feel Dad really has good. No. Uh, <laughs> I I feel very comfortable saying that this Deadpool one though is in my top three of the year. It's and look again, we say this all the time whenever a new piece of marketing for Deadpool comes out. The movie may be awful, mm -hmm. I mean, it might, but. The marketing campaign alone, while I'll say that that Batman v Superman trailer to me is still the best trailer of the year, without any hesitation, the marketing campaign for Deadpool mm -hmm. is by far, head and shoulders, the best marketing campaign. This is a movie, even when it first announced and they said it was going to be rated R, this is a movie that a lot of people had some conversations saying, this movie will, to do good, it'll open with about a $30 million opening weekend, whatever. Those are no longer our expectations, mm -hmm. all because of the marketing campaign. Now expectations are like 70 million, 
65 million, 75 million, you know, is in that sort of range, which is getting close to double what our original estimations were just because of how good this marketing campaign was. I mean, who knows? It may hit a hundred million dollar mm -hmm. opening weekend. I still think that's a bit of a stretch for an R-rated film like this to hit 100 million, but it could come close and it might surpass it, who knows? But it, if it does, it'll all be because of the brilliance of this marketing campaign. I mean, the way they've handled it from the big trailer releases, which have been spectacular, the little viral stuff they put out. Did you see um, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool during Halloween with the little kids in costumes? During Halloween. Yes. I, mean, I might have. Look it up mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it because you will die laugh he's but with a bunch of little kids at halloween i mean i love the, and the billboards too the, the, oh what did you show me the other day not not sit on this but the other one. Oh, about uh get my load or get something load like that yeah. like that catches your attention if yes, even if you does. don't know anything about this movie like how could you not look at that and be like what the hell is this oh, yeah, i've been talking to friends of mine who have no concept of who or what deadpool is they have yeah. no idea that he's a comic book character i mean they kind of made that assumption because of what he looks right. like but they never heard of him blah, blah blah but they're dying to see this movie totally because of the marketing campaign so fox whoever you hired for this marketing campaign hire them for every movie yeah. you do <laughs> from from now on until forever all right, I think that's it for our for all our main stories. Yes. So what we're going to do now is go to our mailbag. Listen, guys, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, you can just email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. Now, we are also going to take some of your live questions. I know a lot of you are watching us live right now. So you can start tweeting in some questions to at Collider Video. Make sure you're following us on Twitter as well. And then Ashley will pick out some of those at the end. But for now, let's go to the mailbag. So Ashley, what do we got? Quark Frenzy writes, Hey, Collider <laughs> crew. I have been a huge fan since the early days of the AMC channel. Anyway, my question is, if Warcraft and Assassin's Creed are smash hits at the box office, do you think we might get a Fallout 4 movie? I think the plot of Fallout 4 is just waiting for a big screen adaptation. Um, I think there is a, probably a group of people somewhere that are just waiting to pull the trigger on a Fallout film. Uh, now, it obviously won't be Fallout 4. It'll just be called Fallout. Um, and when you think about it, it the game itself is already a formula that works narrative wise. There's lots you can do here, whether you're following the game closely or not following it closely at all. There's a lot of promise there. Look, I I've been saying this for a long time. I believe, and I could be dead wrong. I believe Warcraft and Assassin's Creed have us on the brink of something that could be really special. It could, if these two films are really good, and if they do very well, they don't have to make $500 million and they don't have to be 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. But if they're solid, if they're good, and if they make decent money, this could usher in a new age of video game movies. Now, a lot of video game movies have been made in the past and they all suck. But this could usher in a new age of video game movies if this happens. Fallout is definitely one of those. I know there's like a dozen video game properties right now that are kind of in soft development that people are just waiting to see how Warcraft and Assassin's Creed mm -hmm. does. And if they do well, you know the production companies all over the country are going to be pulling those triggers and they're going to start moving on these video game properties like you have never seen. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing has yet to be seen. We're going to mm -hmm. have to let history judge that. But we could be on the precipice of a whole new goal. I'm still very excited for Warcraft. Some people weren't so thrilled with the trailer. That's fine. Uh, Assassin's Creed is still a big question mark for a lot of people. Everybody's excited. Mac Michael Fassbender is attached to it. But you know, we just had like a, a, the first like little image drop of it the other day. But we haven't seen anything from it yet, which is understandable. They're shooting the film. So um, it could be, and yes, I think Fallout is not so far away as long as these two movies don't bomb. We're going to see a Fallout film. A while ago, we talked about a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Oh my goodness, yes. Is there any updates on that? Because I wanted to see that so bad. I you know, We were just talking about Five Nights at yeah, Freddy's around what the office the other day. Of yeah, I don't, I haven't heard any updates on it. Mm -hmm. I know it's still on, mm -hmm. I know it's still on, but I haven't heard any updates on it or where they are as far as that, or I can't even remember off the top of my head if they named a director. Mm -hmm. If you guys know if they've named a director, uh, drop it in the comments section, yeah. please. But that is still... Man, there were people around the office here the other day that had never played Five Nights at Freddy's, and they were just watching videos on YouTube yeah. of people playing Five Nights at Freddy's. I think it was our friends over the Fine Brothers. Was it the Fines that did Kids React to Five Nights yeah, at Freddy's? Yeah, we were watching the, the Fine Brothers do their uh, Kids React to Five Nights at Freddy's, and just people were getting freaked out in the <laughs> office watching. They're like, guys, like going, nope, nope. It's, it would seem like such a good movie. I would love to see this. Oh my, even if that wasn't a video game. 
Yeah. The premise yeah. is fantastic. Totally. I cannot totally. wait to see that. All right, what's next? Azan Sims writes, John stated recently that you guys would not be starting a Collider TV talk show in the same vein as with Movie Talk. However, once it starts again, would you guys consider doing a weekly Game of Thrones recap show given its massive viewership? Yep. And uh, yeah, so one of the things when we started, it was kind of weird because when we were starting our TV recap shows and we asked people which shows they would like to see, so many people were saying, start with this show or start with this show. And it's and a lot of them were saying, like, start with Game of Thrones. Like, you know that Game of Thrones doesn't come back for like eight mm -hmm. months, right? Um, but right from the beginning that we start recap shows, Game of Thrones was definitely on our radar and it was one that this is definitely one we're going to do. It's out of all TV shows, the number one show that we'll probably do will be Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, we have had to wait a very long time. And it doesn't have, open till when, Dennis? April? End yeah. Of April. End of April. It doesn't even start up till end of April. So we're still months and months away from Game of Thrones coming back. But uh, rest assured, yes, Game of Thrones will absolutely be one of the shows that we do. Who will be on that recap show? We don't know yet. Like I said, the show is still like four months away. So let us get a little bit closer to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, th but that will be one of our recap shows. All right. All right, what's next? Stephen K. writes, Hey, Collider crew, I love the show. I was curious as to how you would rank the actors that play in Avengers based on how well they played their role. Keep up the good work. That's, I mean, really, when you think about it, the actors in Avengers are fantastic. And to me, I would have two different sets of answers. Like if I had, who do I think are the best actors? in the Avengers, and who do I think are the best actors in the Avengers? You know, who who played their roles best in Avengers, which is, I think, what you're asking, as opposed to who do I think are just, in general, the better actors, because they would be, a, it would be a different list. Like, because if you were to ask me just, if I had to rank just on pure acting ability, the actors who appear in Avengers, I would probably start with, at number one, I might go Mark Ruffalo. Um, and then after Mark Ruffalo would probably be Jeremy. And then probably after Jeremy would probably be Scarlet. And then Evans. Then Robert Downey Jr. Then Hemsworth. Yeah, that that's the, at least that original crew of Avengers. And all of them are great. They're, I mean, they're all really, really good. So it's not like one is great and whoever comes in six. Or ten, no, they're all really good. But that's how I'd rank them. How would I rank them playing their specific Avenger roles, though? That's a different list. Because to me, you got to start with Robert Downey Jr. playing Tony Stark. I mean, that's that's your number <laughs> totally. one right there. I mean, absolutely. Totally. There's nobody who so owns and embodies their role in Avengers, like, at least in my opinion, at any rate, that like Robert Downey Jr. does with Tony Stark. I mean, he's just the guy. After that, I'd probably go Chris Evans as Captain America. Then after that, I'd probably do Scarlett Johansson as, uh, as Widow. Uh, after that, I'd probably put uh, uh, Hemsworth is a great Thor. I might even <laughs> put Hemsworth as Thor above Scarlett Johansson in that. Um, so that's, so like I said, two different lists for two different That's questions. a tough ranking. It I is. mean, it's all these really actors hard. are so talented. I can't even... Oh, that is a tough, tough question. It's unfair. It really is. I mean, it's completely it really unfair. Is. When you look at all the talent on that screen, and they've all played their character so great. Like Chris totally. Hemsworth playing Thor oh, is just, just unbelievable. <laughs> Actually, you know so what? I, okay, Tony, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. as as, uh, as Iron Man, that's got to stay number one, absolutely. But Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth, you could who plays Captain America better versus who plays... like. That, that could be interchangeable. By the way, if you've not seen the interview I did with Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans at the same time. You lucky man. Uh, that, was, that, <laughs> that was one of the funniest and most fun things I've ever done in this job. I mean, it was like 15 minutes of just cracking up. It was, um, they were fantastic. They were wonderful. If you, if you don't, if you haven't seen it, check out that interview because it was pretty fun. All, All right. right, what's next? Next question comes from John C., a uh, different John C., writes, love the show. Do you ever see a Battlestar Galactica movie happening? Um, yes, and it's a movie that needs to happen uh, because the story is just so fantastic. Now, back in 2013, Brian Singer was actually attached. Uh, X-Men Days of Future Past and X-Men Apocalypse's Brian Singer was actually attached to direct 
a brand new Battlestar Galactica film. That would be a brand new version. It wouldn't be a continuation of the TV show or anything like that. It would be a new incarnation of telling the mythology of Battlestar Galactica. In 2014, uh, Universe confirmed that they were developing it. They had, uh, I'm trying to remember who the writer was. I can't remember the writer off the top of my head that they had lined up. But they had lined up a writer. Brian Singer was no longer attached. And that's the last I heard of it. So as far as I know, there's no Battlestar Galactica movie in development right now. But as far as I understand, the rights belong to, to uh, Universal at the moment. So Battlestar Galactica is over at Universal. And they said they had plans for it. I got to believe they do. Because this is a blockbuster film. And... In an era when all the studios are looking for franchises, right? They're all looking for franchises right now and films that have franchise potential. Battlestar Galactica is that property. Battlestar Galactica gives you that potential for a franchise and a particular, you know, an awesome one that has a built-in audience already. It's sci-fi, it's epic, it's, it's a war film, it's a fantasy film, it's a sci-fi film all rolled into one. It can be dark and gritty, yet fun and jovial at the same time. Um, so I really hope they get that ball moving. I absolutely have to believe that at some point it's going to happen. All right, folks. Well, I said we'd save a little bit of time to take some of your live Twitter questions, and we're going to do that right now. Once again, just tweet to us at Collider Video. Ashley's picking out the mm -hmm. question. So, Ashley, what do we got? All right. First question comes from Henrik Granlid. Um, and it's a behind the scenes question. Oh, I love the behind the I scenes question. We just did a whole mailbag on behind the scenes. Yeah, those are so fun. So send fun. them in if you have them, guys. All right, he writes, "Hi guys, and happy holidays. I've been curious to know what. Well, it's kind of behind the scenes. What your absolute favorite movie snack slash condiments are? Um, I am a very traditional vanilla guy. I am popcorn and soda, dude. And and to me, popcorn." Popcorn is really just a butter delivery device. So accurate. Isn't that true? Like fries with ranch. Yes. Like I just want to eat the ranch. And if I can know, pour it into my mouth, I would. You know what? I've evolved a little bit. You have? Yes. I've gone from fries with ranch to fries with honey mustard. Ooh. A nice okay. mild honey mustard right. is like really aces. That sounds good. But to me, it's all about the butter. Um, butter, as to quote Chris Pratt, butter is my favorite food. Um, so now here's what I do. Now, I used to think I was smart because what I this do is- This is actually genius. I know where you're going with this. Okay. This is genius. Everyone listen up. So what I used to do was I used to ask them, can you give me the bag half full first? And they give me the bag half full. Then I run over to the butter dispensary and pour in all the butter. Then I say, okay, now fill up the bag. They fill up the bag and I put butter on it again. You used to think that was smart. And then started doing something different. And here's what you do, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a movie theater that you use where it's self-serve butter, here's what you do. You, you don't have to bother asking them to fill it halfway, go over it and come back. No, no, no. <laughs> what you do is you get a, the biggest straw they have, right? And then you push the straw about three quarters of the way down into your bag and then put the tip of the straw on the butter dispensary and then start pumping the butter so it goes all the way down. Then start moving your straw around to get it down there. <laughs> then you just keep bringing, I don't like the way my hand looks right now. So what you do is you start raising up the straw, keep that motion going, moving the straw around inside the bag and raising it up, raising it up until you get to the top and now you just got butter going over the top. Genius. It is a satisfying buttery except <laughs> race moaning right. in the background it is a wonderful experience my friends <laughs> it will change your life so yes I, what's, you what's bring, yours you should bring boba straws with you to the theater yeah, that's a great idea that's a great idea just carry boba straws yes what is your favorite snack at the um theater? nachos easily i love nachos extra cheese um but i also love chocolate so I've, I'm yeah. one of those people that stands in the line for about half hour asking the person like a ton of questions and you're like, can you move on girl? I want to <laughs> get my snack. That's me holding up the line. Although I got to say, I have kind of ruined myself for straight up chocolate. Why? Because about a year ago, I started, I don't know why, because I, I always used to love Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh, But now diggity. when I'm at home, maybe like twice a month, mm -hmm. me and Ann will walk over to the convenience store and just buy like some milk chocolate bars yeah. and a jar of smooth peanut butter. Oh, and no, then what no. we do is we just break up the chocolate and scoop it in the peanut butter mm. and eat it that way. And now I, I almost don't eat chocolate without a big jar of peanut butter with just me bring anymore. peanut butter with you to the movie theater. The boba straws, there we go. The peanut the boba butter. Straws and peanut butter. We're all set. All right, what's <laughs> next? The next question comes from Dan. And he writes, you guys think Avatar lost its momentum by taking so long to deliver a sequel? Yes. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's still, I, I don't, 
expect Avatar 2, 3, or 4 to come anywhere near the results of Avatar 1. But mm -hmm. it, they don't need to come anywhere near the results of Avatar 1 to be a smash huge mm -hmm. success. Um, have they waited too long? Yep, it's, it's unfortunate, but at least they didn't wait longer. And still, don't cry any tears for Avatar losing all of its momentum. It's gonna, they're, those films are gonna do just fine. They're gonna do just fine. Could they have done better if they came out like a year or two ago? Yes, they could have done better, but they're still gonna make big bank. They're gonna be big successes, no worries. Okay, next question comes from John Paul Commerce, and a lot of people have been asking this question. He writes, what is a Mary Sue character? We talked about this on the show the other day. Yeah, a Mary Sue, I, I was I read a definition of it a while ago, and it just described it uh, the best way. Look, at, look it up yourself, Mary Sue, but basically it's like this character, it's a female character. And I keep, there's, there's a male version of it as well, and I can't Gary remember, Sue. Gary Sue? <laughs> Um, is the male version of the character. But basically what it is, it's this, it's this female protagonist in a film that is basically set up that can't fail. I mean, everybody likes the character, does nothing wrong, everything's great, and everything works out in the end. And, and they kind of, it's called a Mary Sue character. And it's, it's, it's a lazy device. And this all came up big. Like I said, look up the Wikipedia definition. It's much better than the way I'm describing it. But it recently came up big because there were some people out there who either didn't understand what a Mary Sue was or didn't understand Star Wars The Force Awakens at all, who were saying that um, the uh, Rey character was a Mary Sue character. And I have to ask them if they even saw Star Wars, if they're asking that, because she does not fit the definition of a Mary Sue character, like at all, to me at any rate. Um, so best thing to do, just look it up online. Don't take my definition for it off the top of my head. All right, Joshua Howell writes, if Deadpool is a success, do you think Marvel will consider more R-rated films? I think everybody will consider more R-rated films. Look, Warner Brothers was kind of that first penguin. You ever see all those penguins like cramming in against each other on the edge of a cliff, waiting for that first penguin to dive in the water because they got to see if there's a seal in there waiting to snatch them up? Um, Warner Brothers was kind of the first in the water in this new breed of films anywhere when they tried an R-rated Watchmen. They lost money on it. And so everybody's been real trigger, trigger shy ever since. Now comes along Fox, and they are not only doing it, they are embracing it. They are going full on hardcore, unabashedly rated R in every way you can possibly mm -hmm. imagine. And it's like anything else. If something new gets tried and it's a smash success, you know everybody's watching it. So you know Marvel is watching what Fox is doing with uh, Deadpool. You know DC is watching what Fox is doing with Deadpool. And certainly Fox is paying close attention to what they're doing with Deadpool. But even if it works, they're going to have to keep in mind that Deadpool isn't just a generic R-rated film. Deadpool is a very specific character with a, with a very mm -hmm. specific following and a very specific style that suited the R rating. What I hope doesn't happen is that if Deadpool is a big success, that everybody just takes movies that would be better served as PG-13 and say, oh, let's do it R now. I mean, doing R for the sake of doing R isn't helping anybody. Doing R for a property like Deadpool, that's helpful. R would have been a nice rating for, say, Suicide Squad. But mm -hmm. at this point, Warner Brothers doesn't want to w go back in there. They got burned on The Watchmen. Um, but R would not be good for a Batman film. R would not be good for a Superman film. R would not be good for a Wonder Woman film. Yeah, maybe an Aquaman film, depending on the style of Aquaman you're doing. But what I hope doesn't happen is, if it's a success, I hope studios will open up their minds to the possibility of R-rated properties for the appropriate properties. And what I hope doesn't happen is that they just start thinking, oh, let's just start making everything R because R works, because that's not the right formula either. So let's wait and see how Deadpool does. I hope it's gonna be great. All right, Daniel Lozano writes, John, are you gonna wait to watch B versus S with the fans as you did with Man of Steel? Can't decide, can't I, decide. I, mm, uh, it's, I want to. I want to. That's a nice way to put it. The, the, <laughs> the problem is, is that everybody in here is going to see it early. We're all going to, everybody in here is going to see it early. And we need to talk about it early. And we generally, like we did with Star Wars Force Awakens, we try to record our spoilers uh reviews early so they can release the day the movie comes out so while i want to wait to see it on opening night with an actual movie crowd 
I think my job responsibilities are going to preclude me from doing that. So I want to, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'll probably have to see a press screening in advance. All right, Jonathan M. Peterson writes, Adam's Family Reboot, yay or nay, who would you pick to direct and who would you cast? Uh, don't care about who you get to direct or who you cast. Just get good actors and a good director and we're fine. There's thousands of them. Um, yeah, I'd be for it. I totally be for it. I think this it, Adam's Family is one of those properties where like, I think every 20 years you can take another shot at it mm -hmm. uh, for a new generation. I mean, it's such a funny, quirky thing that I think it could work. So yeah, I'd be all for it. All right, Kareem Yamut writes, Oh, this is a toughie. Who is your favorite sidekick in a movie? Oh, wow. I mean, I the, I don't like questions like these because these are questions you have to sit down for an yeah. hour and really think about everything. So I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'll go great sidekick in a movie. Owen Wilson in Shanghai, in Shanghai Noon. Owen okay. Wilson in Shanghai Noon. There we go. All right, Jai Patel writes, why do so few sequels use numbers nowadays? Why the hate for numbers? Numbers are awesome. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, aside from Star Wars, all right, aside from Star Wars, I much prefer movies being numbered. Okay. I much prefer uh, like uh, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 2, Jurassic Park 3, mm. And then Jurassic Park 4 was kind of a relaunching of the franchise, so I don't mind you naming that Jurassic World. Um, but And I would have much preferred Avengers Age of Ultron to be called Avengers 2. I mean, I'll quite often, I mean, I am with you. I am personally a fan of the numerical system. It's simple, it's to the point, 10 years from now, you're not wondering, okay, now, oh, is Harry Potter and the bubbly boil pot of poop which one was that did that one come after harry potter so and the first kiss in the boardroom did that come after harry like i i just it's stupid just harry potter one harry potter two harry potter three i don't know i mean look i understand there's a lot of people who really do like the subtitles and that's cool that's great i i'm not actually not gonna raise stick about i don't really care all that much but i wish i lived in a world where it's just no it's it's smoking the bandit one. It's smoking the bandit two. It's smoking the bandit three. There you go. So that's so the way I would personally prefer it. All right. Danny Soltero writes, greetings, guys. I'm just curious. Will it just be John doing movie talk this week? P.S. Try popcorn with nacho cheese. It's so good. Oh, I've yeah, never even that considered good. that. Okay. That good. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to let you in a little secret. We've got a uh, Collider uh, staff meeting uh, right after this uh, show is done shooting. And that's when you're going to... Yeah, yeah this, and the staff meeting for the next two weeks whenever we say staff meeting we mean we're all walking across the street to go watch Star Wars and we're doing that as soon as the show's done I'm going to try me some popcorn with a little nacho cheese that I can't even remember good. the question now <laughs> yeah. what was the question? yes if it was only you doing movie talk oh, this week oh no 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 uh, it's just that everybody's still on vacation but Mark is back tomorrow he, he's finally get, gets back so uh, it will be me and Mark for tomorrow and Wednesday. Then just to let you know, there will be no Collider movie talk on Thursday for New Year's Eve or Friday for New Year's Day uh, because everybody will be out doing charity work. Oh, that's so nice. No, there was to be hungover. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was thinking. All right. Kareem Yamut writes, what is your least favorite experience going to the movies? Uh, by far, by far, by far. I, look, I'm really lucky. Everybody talks about how Everybody talks in movie theaters and blah, blah, blah. And I find 90% of the time, most movie audiences are are actually pretty good. Most, you know, little talking, little sticker, but I don't mind that so much. I have had a couple of bad experiences though. And by far, the worst movie going experience I ever had was going to see that Jim Carrey film. Um, the number, was it 13? Oh, 23 The, the number 23, something? I think that was yeah. it. Was the number 23. First of all, because it was a terrible movie. <laughs> but other than that, we had this gaggle of these five teenage girls sitting behind us that I look I'm a pacifist I don't believe in mm -hmm. violence at, at like at all on any level to anybody or you know all, all that kind of stuff but oh my god I was hoping for terrible things for them I was hoping for terrible things for them in their futures. Why? Why? Oh my God! They're bad, and they were just talking. Not even they weren't even talking about the movie. You know, the, you know, somebody's got those irritating people in front of them where the guy will turn to the girl. Wait a minute! Why did he say this to her? And they keep talking. <laughs> they weren't even talking about the movie for heaven's sakes. They were just talking, full volume, like they weren't yelling, but they weren't trying. To, they weren't even attempting to quiet their voices. Like they were basically talking at the level I'm talking at right now. 
Well, what did well what did Bobby say to Jenny after that? Oh my God, did he really do that? Like at that level, like the whole freaking movie. And finally, me and my buddy turned around to them and said, "Will you please shut the f up?" Like it was just unbelievable. And they were quiet for about ten minutes, and then they kept talking again. It was just horrific. And I I'm, thankfully, I've never had an experience that bad before, and I've never had one that bad since. So uh, yeah, that was my worst experience ever. What about what's your worst experience going on? Um, movies? you know, I I am probably that girl that's doing the talking because oh, I really dear haven't had. No. no, I'm not really. I just I haven't had thankfully bad experiences. I mean, the worst I can think of is when a, a parent brings their kid to a movie and the kid can't stop crying. But honestly, like it's just a parent and they they can't stop their kid from crying. And most parents are really good that you know yeah. they try to get their kid to quiet down for a minute or two and they don't. They take them out. Yeah, I, mean, that's, I have no problem with that. All right, last question of the day. Oh, okay, it's the last one. All right, um, Joey. Current, I got a movie right? to get to. <laughs> <laughs> what classic novel would you like to see made into a movie? What classic novel that hasn't already been turned into a movie? Well, I mean, this isn't considered a classic, and we've talked about it before, but like James Clavell's Shogun, they did a miniseries of it, I think in the 80s, um, uh, for that. Shogun needs to be a movie. Mm -hmm. Shogun is amazing. It's about this English uh, seaman who, uh, his mm -hmm. ship gets thrown off course in, in a storm, whatever, he winds up in China. This is way, this is like in the 1700s or 1800s, something. I can't even remember the, the era, but it's during the samurai feudal age. And he ends up there and becomes acclimated into the culture and befriends one of the shoguns and uh, or one of the warlords who's vying to become shogun. It's anyway, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance, read it. I really hope they do a movie version of it. Mm -hmm. And look up. You might be able to find somewhere the old miniseries that was done on TV because it was actually really, really well done. But a modern day modern version uh, telling of shogun would be insane. All right, folks, that'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget, lots of great films playing over at our friends at AMC Theaters, for which I'm about to walk over to to go watch Star Wars again. <laughs> Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater, showtime, and, of course, your movie ticket information. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here and make sure you bookmark Collider.com and make sure you click the thumbs up button. It's just a nice way of letting us know that you like the videos that we're doing. I want to thank, of course, the only person sitting at the table with me, Miss Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find I you online? I keep forgetting where my single is, so I'm not making... Okay, here. Over there. You guys can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy Monday, guys. I'm going to do something I've never done on this show. What? I want to comment on your nails. <gasps> Those are like some chrome flashy nails. That's yeah. some bling right there. Some people call them scary. I've had like four guys say, your nails are scary. I'm like, scary? thank you for the compliment, dear. I, think I look at your nails and right? I think... I, I just choose to believe. I know it's not the case. I choose to believe those fingernails are your homage to Captain Phasma That's, in Star I've Wars. I've gotten that, those tweets. Like really? People have tweeted Captain me Phasma? that. Yes. There you go. I'm all for it. <laughs> and of course, you guys can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter simply at John Campia. That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of Cloud Movie Talk. And until tomorrow, bye-bye. Hey, guys. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.